Welcome to the Stat Cookies video series, Learn Statistics with Cookies. Topic 1, Central Tendency and Variation. Now, variation, again, is how much the data is distributed, how much the values are distributed and different from one another. We have three kinds of variation, and they go along with the three kinds of central tendency. We have the standard deviation, again, used with ratio or integer numbers, the interquartile range, which can be used with ratio numbers, but is usually used with integer or ordinal values, and the variation ratio, which is less common, I'll admit, but I wanted to include it for the sake of completeness. It can be used with nominal values, which these other two cannot. So let's take a look at the standard deviation. In terms of our cookie example, the standard deviation describes how well mixed the chips are into the cookie dough. If the chips are very well mixed and very evenly distributed, the standard deviation is low. If the chips are just kind of tossed in there and stirred around a little bit so that some cookies have way more chips than others, the standard deviation is high. Standard deviation requires ratio data. You have to be able to divide the numbers into fractions or decimals in order to be able to calculate it. One standard deviation around the mean, plus and minus, will contain 68% of the data. And this is by definition, and it has to do with the sum of squares method that I'm going to show in just a moment. It is based on the calculation of variance. The square root of the variance is the standard deviation. So let's take a look here. Let's say we've got all these cookies, and we're piling them up according to how many chips are in each cookie. So you can see we've got some cookies with as few as three chips, some with as many as, and they run the gamut in between with most of them here in the middle. And if we were just going to estimate, this looks like a pretty symmetrical curve. We would draw a mean line in the middle, and we know that we had 144 chips to begin with. We have 24 cookies. The mean is therefore six chips per cookie. Now to calculate the variance, we're going to start to measure how many cookies out from the mean each of these values are. Now, the, this is assuming that we are measuring chips per cookie. So this column indicates six chips per cookie. This all, column indicates seven chips per cookie. Let's see what happens here. For all of the cookies in the mean column, the difference between the number of chips in each cookie and the mean number of chips is zero. So even though there are six cookies here, that's going to be multiplied by zero. Now, we also have a number of cookies that differ from the mean number of chips per cookie by one or minus one. And we're going to square that. So minus one squared is one, one squared is one. And in each case, we have five cookies in the, each of these columns. So that'll be five times one plus one times five, okay? Now we're looking at cookies where the number of chips per cookie is a difference of two from the mean number of chips per cookie. So two less chips, two more chips per cookie. We'll square those values again. So negative two squared is four times two, two squared is four times two. And then finally, we're looking at the individual cookies we have that have a difference of three chips from the mean. So nine here, three here. So. 3 squared is 9, negative 3 squared is 9, but we only have one cookie for each of these. We're going to add up. These are called the squares. We're going to add up the squares to make the sum of squares. So 0 plus 10 plus 16 plus 18 is 44. That's the sum of squares. We divide that by the number of cookies that we have all together. Again, n equals 24 cookies. And that gives us 1.9. This is the variance. And again, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. 
Let's take a look at how that looks in a spreadsheet. So here we have the same data. This is a batch of cookies, and we observe how many chips are in each cookie, and then we subtract the mean number, 6, from the observed number. So 3 minus 6, negative 3, and so forth, all the way down to positive 3. Then we take this difference, the observed minus the mean, and square it. And we see that we get the same numbers over here that we saw in the previous slide. Add those up, and the sum of squares is 44 divided by n, 1.9130, and then we take the square root of that, and that's the standard deviation right here, 1.3831, and so forth. What this Nine process chips. does is more heavily weight the items that vary the most from the mean, and it assigns considerably less weight to the items that are quite close to the mean. So this is a way of calculating how widely the data is distributed from the mean. Now we've seen that the standard deviation is calculated from variance, and we've initially calculated our variance for this sample of cookies, but let's say we make another batch of cookies, and this time we don't mix them up so well. Our standard deviation here as the square root of our variance is 1.38, so we're measuring from the mean 1.38 out, and that contains 68% out of 24 of the cookies, 16.32 cookies, which this more or less shows. Here's a different batch of cookies in which I didn't mix the chips at all well. I have some cookies with no chips and some cookies with quite a lot of chips. And if I follow the same procedure to calculate the variance, taking the squares of the differences between each measurement, each observation, and the mean, I'm going to come out with a very different standard deviation. After calculating out the variance, my standard deviation is 3.04. This is quite a bit larger than 1.38 and ends up encompassing the same number of cookies. This is still going to be 16.32 cookies. It's still about 68% of the 24 cookies in the batch, but it's much more spread out rather than being vertical. And there are many more different measurements of chocolate chips in these cookies. This is a concept that we'll be using over and over again. So keep working with this until you're sure you understand it. Another method of variation that we have is the interquartile range. As with the median, this is based on ordering the data by size and then picking the items at the first and third quartiles, and I'll show you what that means. This interquartile range will contain exactly half or 50% of the data, as opposed to 68% with the standard deviation. As with the median, the interquartile range is less susceptible to outliers than the standard deviation, just as the median is less susceptible than the mean. And this method, again, can be used with ordinal data, such as rankings or ratings, which the mean cannot. So let's take a look and see how we do this. We're going to line up the cookies in the order of the number of chips and pick the cookies at the first and third quartiles. So we've counted the number of chips in each cookie. And the first quartile is here. One quarter of the cookies have fewer chips than this cookie. The second quartile is here. Uh, I'm sorry, the third quartile is here. Three quarters of the cookies have fewer chips than this cookie. So the quartile values are 5 and 9. The interquartile range is the difference between these two values, which is 9 minus 5, or 4. The interquartile range is 4 chips per cookie. This is rather larger than the variance or the standard deviation. 
Finally, I would briefly like to discuss the variation ratio. Again, this is a much less common measure, but it is the measure of variation that goes with the mode. It is the proportion of the largest group of values out of the whole set. It is much less commonly used than the standard deviation or the interquartile range, but it can be used with nominal or categorical data, which the other two methods cannot be. So again, here we have our three groups of three types of cookies. Frosted cookies are the mode. So we take that value, five frosted cookies, divide by the number of cookies we have all together, 10 cookies, five divided by 10 is one half or 0.5 or 50%. So the variation ratio of the mode frosted cookies is 50% or 0.5. That's it for this week. In the next video I'll discuss correlation and we'll look at whether the diameters of the cookies and the number of chips per cookie are correlated. Give that some thought. Do you think it would necessarily be the case or might it vary? We'll find out next time. Thank you.